Hello, everybody. We're back in black. Magic Forkery. Make sure to check out the like button. And let's start off with number 19. Some people, they are just built different. That does not look good. In fact, this is like my number one nightmare scenario when it comes to the new car that I'm getting very soon. Because if this were to happen in an open cockpit, very light single seater where I'm just my head's exposed, it wouldn't go well. I would not end up nearly as unscathed as this guy here, who probably owes a lot to like modern safety inside of cars these days and all the airbags and all that stuff that I will not have in the car that I'm getting. So fingers crossed that this scenario never plays out because that wouldn't that wouldn't be me. But modern car safety, much better. Probably wouldn't have turned out like that in the past. Five squares to four circles. Okay, so we have a little piece of something. Doesn't really look like five squares. It just kind of looks like a jumble of different squares. But, you know, whatever works. But then it's going to turn into circles. Oh, because it's got, like, different cuts so that when you change the perspective, it looks different depending upon what angle you're looking at. And obviously, if you were holding the thing in your hand, like you can actually see in the very beginning when he's holding it, like looks a little weird, looks a little wonky. You know, you can see some curves there on some of the edges. And it's just because you're looking at it at the proper angle. It's like one of those street art things that like you have to be looking at the right spot. But when you do, then it looks like you've just got this, you know, object sitting in front of you, even though it's painted flat on the sidewalk. Those are always like just the freaking coolest street art things. Do we ever get a good, does he ever turn the thing in, you know, so we can see how it all looks from different? No, it's a secret. Magician never reveals their tricks. We don't get to see it. He's not gonna do a, a full pivot. So we get to see everything. No, cause then we'd be able to replicate it. Surely no one else has figured out how to replicate this shape ever before. I guess Casper got hungry. Are we, what, do we, can we, are we listening to Minecraft music, by the way? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, I'd recognize this music from anywhere. Is the fridge just, hold on, I gotta, I gotta get a replay here. Just casually playing Minecraft? When it's clearly a Vex, you know, a Vex just phased through the refrigerator, popped it open from the inside. <laughs> so I'm gonna, on second thought, maybe I'm not gonna go over there. You know, the first time I was like, okay, it's closing. And what the frick happened? The second time, okay, I'm, I'm calling the the Ghostbusters. <laughs> trying to think of what would cause something like this. I don't know if this fridge is like a maybe there's an automated door opening function or something like a button press and that's malfunctioning. Either that or there's some kind of pressure issue happening here that's like forcing the door open. Maybe there's like a compressor that's like forcing air in and just popping the door open or something. I don't know how fridges work fully. Bubble sorcery. No copy strike. Wait, did it like go? It went through the bubble and then the bubble maintained itself. And then it just went into what was below. Bubbles are so cool, dude. Have you ever thought about how cool bubbles are? I don't think about it on a daily basis, okay? People are gonna be like, yeah, oh, you're weird for just always thinking about bubbles. But they are like kind of wild. How just this membrane can just float to the air and you can kind of poke it. Sometimes it'll pop, but other times it'll just like boing, 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 like this. Bubbles are crazy. The ambiguous illusion object series invented by mathematician Kokichi uh, Sugihara. I'm good at names. Also includes a Batman and Superman logo printed and sold by 3DNY Design. This video not sponsored by this series of things in 3D NY design, but it is sponsored by Quality Content, where you can get the new drop at qualitycontent.com while supplies last. Link available in the description. We got some cool, unique stuff this time around, so check it out. Anyway, uh, it's gonna be more of the same, the things from the, yeah, from, from the other thing with the squares and the circles, except is it gonna be like different things from, oh, I thought it was gonna be like, have 
four different things that it could look like, you know, you turn it 90 degrees and then it's another couple of things. How would you do that? That's pretty crazy. Wait, I want to, I want to see the pivot again. How does it look in the, in the okay, so it's gotta be, it's just like really angled down a particular way. Yeah. I mean, obviously it has to do with that, but those are like dramatic, like the squares and the circles, you can kind of see how, you know, you might be able to cut those so that squares would turn into circles depending upon the angle, but like, Batman to Superman. It's, it's Superman. The outline. If we forget the S, it's it's what goes around the S. That's a that's a trickier one to achieve. That's a much trickier one to achieve, I think. Like you can see, you can kind of see some of the ridges and stuff in there, but still, it's like kind of gnarly. This graffiti piece by Vile. Now, let's see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, how it looks 3D when you see it from, well, I mean, it looks this, like this regardless, not necessarily 3D, but it looks like it blends into the background. The perspective lines up with the surrounding perspective when you view it from this particular angle. I wonder how you go about getting permission to do a street art like this. Like, hey, city, can I get your permission to do a, a mural here, you know, I know you frown upon graffiti most of the time, you clean it up afterwards, but I promise mine, here's my portfolio, will be very cool. So, if you don't mind, that'd be kind of sick. And hopefully, like, no one graffitis over it afterwards. I think that happened, like, a few days ago here in LA. There was, like, a really cool mural on the side of the, the freeway, um, like, an underpass, and then someone's just like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint over that. I'm gonna graffiti it. It's like, my plasma lamp, while turned off, will turn on when I hit a certain key on my piano keyboard. I feel like we need mu or, uh, <laughs> music. We need sound for this one. Please do not copy or strike me for your piano key <laughs> notes. I do not know how plasma lamps work. And so therefore, I have no idea why a particular frequency causes it to turn on, but that's interesting, nonetheless. I wonder, uh, you know what, I wonder actually if it's not that the, uh, the frequency of the piano key is somehow causing, like, plasma to take place. It's just that the frequency of that particular piano key is, like, causing some sort of vibration in the, in the on-off switch wire that's causing it to like contact and it doesn't work with any of the other frequencies but that's like the resonant frequency which causes it to just vibrate a little bit more and come into contact so it's basically like connecting the on off switch or something this is coming from me who has no formal electrical engineering background or anything like that at all and has no idea electricity is basically magic to me but i know that usually on off things have to happen and that it, it at sound is a vibration you know and that's what's physics with Jardon. Welcome to your today's lesson. Find the curved line. It's a trick question. There is no curved line. They're all straight lines. Don't you gaslight me here and tell me there's actually a curved line. The interesting thing about this one though is that when you when you're looking at it like right at the, the spot that you're focusing on, everything does look like straight lines. But then Kind of in your in your peripherals, like when I'm staring right here, over in this area, I start to see, oh, it looks kind of curvy, but then you actually go over there and you're like, there's no curved line. What the heck? What are you doing, eyeballs? It's wherever you're not looking that the curvy waves start to appear and you're like, what the frick is going on? No? You can never catch it. It's like trying to stare at the floaters in your eyeballs. You can never actually look directly at them because your eye will just keep moving because it's not in the center of your vision if you don't know what floaters are. You probably have one or two somewhere. You just didn't know the name of it. It's a little like, a little, you look kind of into the sky or something, you know? It's the little the little squiggly bits that you might have in your, in your eye. Don't worry, like it's normal to have some. I'm a doctor and a physicist and just overall jack of all trades, master of none. Some of you asked for a different angled pick of the impossible cube, so here's an it's been photoshopped one. Not that it matters, your brain will still argue with your eyes in the original post, even after seeing this. This looks like it matches up to here, so we'll do, we'll reverse order them. Over 14 pounds of steel, 10 inches on a side, all it took was four bandsaw cuts to transport it to an alternate dimension. I love transporting things to alternate dimensions, that's so cool. 
Um, I can see, I can see the cuts. Like there's a cut, there's a cut, there's a cut, there's a cut. It still does look kind of trippy. Like this cut, you can kind of, it's like impossible to get a perfectly isometric shot where you don't see any, you know, remnants. I guess it would have had to be a slightly steeper cut right there. Um, but like this one is a little more easy to see and kind of see it intersecting. But this cut, this was, this was well lined up. Yeah, what I just wonder is like, do you, how do you know exactly where to make the cuts? Like, do you use a projector or something like that so that you can, you can line up exactly where you need to make it so that when you're at that pers perspective, it's like, you don't have any mess ups and imagine messing up. Or maybe you just like do it really small and you just keep expanding it little by little, you know? Cause you can always make the cut bigger, but you can't make it smaller. And then we get the alternative perspective here. Why, why did it, why, why is it an, it's been photoshopped thing though? This is cool that that's all it takes. It's just boop, boop, and the boop, boop, nifty. Was this like a, uh, like a, like a trade show or something like that? Like, hey, come to my booth. Look at my welding technology. I have a cool, fancy cube. Look at this. I could do the same for you. Good advertisement, though. Real good advertisement here. Snakehead. Oh, I, w I was like... Huh? What am I... What? Why are we... Why are we cutting the phone in half? I was like, you know, thinking when it said snakehead that... Huh? That it was like they were going to be playing snake on the phone, but they weren't. Is this like snake head? Because if you do this to a snake, the the snake's head is still functioning, which is kind of a it's kind of a sad thought. I don't like that imagery. That's really it's not going to survive that long. That's pretty bad. Is this actually? Huh? Is this like? Is there some kind of trickery in the video here? Also, like, does the phone shut off because the saw starts cutting into it? It looks like the phone shuts off before. It starts going into the saw. I'm assuming that the person like hit the button on the side maybe to shut it off before. There's some trickery going on here. Maybe it's actually just like a remote controlled thing and both sides exist independently of each other. And it was, you know, this isn't just an ordinary phone or something, but I really don't know. This human paint color matching system. Mm, no copy strike. Oh, this guy, he's gonna be able to like look at the color and then just immediately mix the paints to be able to match it precisely. This is gonna be so gnarly. How would you even know? This is like a visual thing. It's like a visual version of people who can just hear a song and immediately just start playing it. Like as the song is going, they never having heard it before can start playing alongside of it on the piano or, you know, violin or something like that. This is like the visual version of that. <laughs> I can just see the, you just see the, the, the thing that's presented to me and immediately just mix the color to be able to match it, which is pretty cool. How, do you do How is that precise? That's crazy, bro. I wonder if that's more precise than machines. Probably not, but pretty impressive. Mind fork. Uh-oh. birds. Obviously, the flamingo should be pink. Uh-oh, I've made an error in the color of the birds. I was gonna just read it, but I guess, no, we can let him narrate to us. The parrot, well, that should be green. But here's a weird... I mean, what if... What if it's just a green flamingo and a pink parrot, okay? Personally, I've played on the pink parrots in Minecraft Championship. So to say that's a mistake is kind of rude to the pink parrots. That's all I'm saying. Weird thing, your brain can correct it. 
you'll be amazed and it'll take just a second to do it as well. To do it, stare hard at the letter X, the cross on the flamingo's neck there. Hold your phone perfectly still and try not on my to phone. Stop telling me what to do. Even for a second. Concentrate really hard. As you're doing this, the color of each bird is fatiguing the cones, the color sensors on your retina. My eyes are getting so seconds, fatigued. I'll drain all of the color from this picture. There'll be none there, but if my theory is right, your brain will flood each bird with the correct color. So the flamingo, that should glow pink, while the parrot will glow green. That's the theory. The amazing thing is that there is no color there at all. It'll no be blinking. Your brain hallucinating no blinking. The whole thing. No blinking. Here we go then. Can't I'll blink. Not let it blink. Just a few seconds. As it Struggling. goes, please don't be distracted. Keep staring at that I'm not cross. distracted. I've never been more focused away. in my life. Even for a moment, the effect will be lost. If you lose the color, try staring hard at the no second blinking. cross again, and hopefully it no will blinking. come back. No blinking. Now, I've only designed oh this today, God. so please let me know if it works. Here we go then. Let's try this. Let's wipe the color in three, two, one. My eyes! Now it's all gone. Any oh my God! The flamingo right is so pink, and the parrot mind. is so green, and now it's gone. It will go away. I hope it worked for you. Please let me know. Hold on, comments. I gotta rewind to make sure I've he didn't he today. didn't do any sort of works. false stuff with the colors there. Any color you No, they definitely didn't have. I was like, nah. He had. There was some color in that transition. There was no color in the transition. It never had any color. Why the frick does it switch though? That's what I don't understand. Why did the why did my brain switch it? Is that because I'm subconsciously used to flamingos being pink and parrots being green? So my brain's like, switch, switch the, the colors. colors. Well, why, why don't, don't we first say? Why did it switch them? Why didn't it just keep the colors where they were before? But it is black and white. I don't understand. That's what I don't get. Why did it switch? I don't get the switching part. I get the I get the residual color thing. I've seen this in other illusions before. Why did it switch the two? That's not okay. I feel like I've forsaken my my pink parrots, the first team that I ever won MCC on. Oh my god. Body transfer illusion. Wait, this is five minutes long. Oh, I've actually seen this. I've actually seen this before. It's five minutes long. It's a bit, it's a bit long. But the general concept, basically, is that, like, even though your arm is over here, you know, you basically have somebody who is who is doing some, like, you know, mimicking things onto your hand, and then finally, you know, they, they basically... They substitute it out, and they stop doing the mimicry, but then they just smash the hand with, you know, a hammer, and even though it's not your hand, you're like, OH MY GOD! <laughs> it is kind of- it is kind of an unsettling thing, though. I can totally understand why you would be like, I don't like this! Missed the nail. I can totally understand. You know, you, it looks like it's your hand. It's in front of you. You're not moving your own hand. Your own hand is over here, but you've just been tricked via like, you know, matching, matching sensations with the ruler beforehand. And then it's just like whack. Like, that would, yeah. I actually think this would be something interesting to try. I haven't ever done it, but I can just totally imagine why it would be really, really unsettling, even though the hand looks just omega wonky. <sighs> okay, here, just stop pausing. Just go for the hit. Just go for the hit. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Stop. Now, again, I did not actually hurt you, did you? You didn't feel no actual pain in your real hand. Yeah, that's what I figured. You don't actually feel it. It's not like it's not like some phantom pain where the visualization actually causes you to feel it. That would be not fun. But you know, it, I totally understand how you'd be like scared. Something made this sea worm go poof. Has a has a wonky looking thing, man. Well, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult it. <laughs> By something I, I did, it was like, man, that was really not cool, dude. I'm gonna go now. Which <laughs> it explodes. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, what? Uh, uh, I didn't mean, I mean, you look really awesome, dude. Don't feel self conscious. I mean, it's not your fault that you came into being in a squiggly fashion. It, I couldn't, I couldn't make up for what I said before. I couldn't, I couldn't go back in time and change fate. It's. <laughs> Maybe that's how they, uh, reproduce. Maybe they just explode and then it's like you get a thousand new ones and, like, 
It's the most efficient reproductive mechanism the world has ever created. Imagine, imagine humans could just be like, you know what? Time to propagate the species. And then, and then we just explode into a bunch of tiny children. <laughs> Allow me to transform myself before your eyes. Wait, are we like triple sea creatures here? Man, sea creatures really are some black magic forkery, aren't they? All right. Is this like a cuttlefish and it's gonna change colors? Probably, I assume. Don't tell me that's like, it's, you know, what? Oh, whoa, it just turned into like a freaking underwater ghost. Dude, imagine you're like scuba diving and then you just see a freaking ghost fly up to you like that. I don't know, maybe you'd be more fascinated than you'd be scared. If you're already scuba diving in a place like that, you're probably pretty used to it. You have more courage than I do. That was a, that was kind of a sus looking thing right there. <laughs> like, what's, what's going on? What's that little pokey thing? That's pretty cool though. The ocean is wild, dude. Deep sea creatures, alien-like transformation. Wow, a yeah, transformation into dust, a transformation, and another transformation. Crazy. What, what even is that? This looks like, some, this is like some kind of, you know, this is like the lead up to some sort of monster incoming in an anime or something like that, you just see this shadow ominously uh, drifting. And then all of a sudden, freaking laser beams. Why did... Is it another one of the same? It's, this, it's another cuttlefish. It is, wait, it's definitely like the same. Is that the same thing? Or is it a jelly? I don't know which it is. That's probably another cuttlefish. Probably the same dude. It's probably the same dude in the last clip who's just having a great time causing people to be like, what the frick is happening here? He enjoys the social media attention. How is he like, how did it look like that though? How did he go from that into cuttlefish or whatever it was? I don't actually know if it's a cuttlefish, but <laughs> there's RGB, <laughs> it's, a, it's a gamer. He's got gaming built into his system. It's it's pretty awesome. You know, they say that we we learn from nature, right? Gamers learn from cuttlefish nature or something like that, dude. All right, well, that's it for the last month of Black Magic Forkery. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Make sure to like the video, check out qualitycontent.com, and I'll see you next time.